we back at it killer frequency man let's see where we are at i still don't trust peggy man i still don't trust it this shadow of her ass back here i ain't trusting peggy i ain't trusted her since the beginning she won't come out of that room or nothing i don't like it all right so let's see what she talking about how's it going hell i don't know what am i supposed to do i'm ready i almost got it. i could use some help yeah what are we doing it's not Remind going well i could use some help uh-huh okay let's review the basics okay we need to work out who the next target is who the next There's target four is. locations right four locations and four people four we need people. to figure out if anyone is at any of the four locations tonight and if they are we can call them and warn them there must be some connections between the notes well that makes sense great what notes? need any more help i'm good, I'm good okay now. here we go thanks peggy no problem all right so let's play shitty detective shitty dj detective Hell, I don't know, man. We about to just take a shot in the dark. F it. How's it going? I'm ready. I'm ready, Peggy. Are you sure? We've only got one shot at this. Yup. F it. We just gonna go for I'm it. Sure. Whatever. Hell. Let's do this. Let's take a lucky okay. guess. Name first. That we're probably not gonna get so lucky. Who do you think so the target is? I'ma go with old Aunt. Aunt Williams. And where will I find them? Uh, power the station. Power station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. F it. Let's see what we get. Hell. Up. It's like trying to find Carmen San Diego's ass. Where in the world? Forrest, Ooh. I'm through to the power plant, but uh -huh. they say there isn't anyone by that name there. Oh, wow, that's what? crazy. Then who? Jeez! Ah! Damn, what was that? It sounds like something blew up. He's what using the? bombs now? <laughs> oh my god. The what the heck? Board, it I one moment. Cardboard. What Forrest, cardboard? I'm getting oh, so cardboard. many calls. Huh? Just let me. I'm gonna take us off air for a moment. Okay, cool. I like the way that sounds. Let's take a break. Take us off air. I like it. Peggy, what's happening in there? What you doing, hey. Peggy? Hey, Peggy, what your ass doing? I'm back. Okay, I was about I to say. The gas station forest. Oh, okay. word. <laughs> I spoke to the fire department Yikes. and the hospital. <laughs> the fire department is useless now, as you know. Yeah, and, exactly, uh, losers. The hospital's only ambulance was at the gas station. Forrest, you, you've got to say something on the radio. No, I don't. You have to yeah. tell the town. What? I, I'm putting us back on air. I'm sure they know now. already. They heard the explosion. Gallows Creek. I don't. Talk about. To I got to tell this, the town. But, Hell. Uh, the gas station's been bombed. Please, everyone. Nuts. Stay safe. <laughs> Why would Stay people still inside, be going outside anyway? And turn that music oh, down. Oh, just bring us into some music, Forrest. Oh, okay. Turn the music back up. Let's blow this up. Careful with this next track, listeners. It's dynamite. Forrest! <laughs> too, <soon. laughs> too soon. Too soon. Up. Let's see how many I've made. 65, man. I'm out here. There's got to be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. Who but is we? we? You mean me, right? Exactly. Yep. Me? Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. You Maybe ain't even start picking with that up no calls. Room you mentioned before. I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Mm. Me too. Look how she waved at me. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. All right, well, guess we'll go back down here and probably meet our demise. Hey, man, Clive's going to come up in here and ask what the hell I'm doing in his secret office. All right, she, she said something about the mannequin. Cause that mug is pointing. What the hell is pointing at? The key? Was this always here? I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. No, that wasn't here the whole time. Let's see. Storage key, huh? That probably goes to this door up here. Let me watch my back, though, while I'm walking around this hole. See if it goes to this door. It just got real quiet. Let me close this door. You know what I mean? Peggy, give me some warning before yelling down right. the intercom. Sorry, bust the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Don't, what? You, come on now. 
There's still more to do here before I get. Okay, fine. See if there's anything back here. No, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> okay, let's do some investigations. What we got in these low curves? What's that? Oh, a mouse trap. Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Hmm? Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. Okay. Let's listen. George Bell. 1968. Uh-huh. That's when this all began for me. George Bell. Follow the maps. Find the tapes. I'll be waiting. Wait. George <clears throat> Barrow? We all heard that he drowned after a night out drinking. Okay. Was it actually Clive? Has Clive really been the whistling man for that long? He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. What map? I think we need to see this what map. else is hidden down here. Be careful, Forrest. Keep looking. Buzz the intercom when you found something. What? Follow the maps and find the tapes? What the hell are y'all talking about? Man, I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Man, it's dark dark in here. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Uh-huh. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. Yeah. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. Mm-hmm. That puts the time of death. What that got to do with me, though? Factory access codes. What the hell is all this stuff? What is all this stuff? Factory access codes. Alarm when entering codes. What? I'm, I'm so confused right now. What does all this even mean? Here, let me toss it in here. That might come in handy later. Okay, here's another tape. Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face. Uh-huh. Typically obtained by running through foliage. Severe blistering to the feet. As though the deceased had been running without stopping. Yeah, what did that say? Police Department, Town of Gallows Creek. Uh, September 3rd, 1968, detailed report. A 4 a.m. call was received from a jogger, a Miss Sandra Sharp reporting that a body had been found washed up, washed up in the reservoir. I drove out to investigate and was able to identify the body at the scene as that of George Barrow. I contacted the coroner's office and then the boy's parents. They informed me that they had not seen him since 7 p.m. on the 2nd. So the day before. Okay. There's one right here though. Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. Uh-huh. However, a high amount of cortisol was found, indicating elevated levels of stress in the immediate moments before death. Ah, here we go. Additionally, there appears to be a post-mortem injury to the arm. Looks like it was trapped in a car door. Okay. It is the coroner's opinion that the subject mm -hmm. likely feared for his life. That's and obvious. Chased, it's obvious. Resulting in a fall from a height into a body of water where he hit his head, was knocked out, and drowned. Following that, he was moved. Dr. Sullivan, we got to talk. That this has to be important. Okay, so some dude walked in. Let's read this. Report of investigation by county medical examiner. Uh, name of deceased George Barrow. Time of death, September 2, 98. The deceased is a Caucasian male, age 18. The cause of death is established to be drowning as shown by the signs of asphyxiation. Uh, abrasions were found on the knuckles, likely from getting into fights in the past. Matches were known heard a little something you know what i mean uh matches with no history of the deceased being aggressive no other injuries were observed and from the coroner's opinion there is no evidence of foul play okay additionally the preliminary toxo uh, toxicology report indicates that uh the deceased had a high level of alcohol in their blood is the coroner's opinion that the deceased went swimming while intoxicated resulting in his drowning i'm sorry i made you do this virginia 
Okay. Who apologizing and why are they apologizing? If you're listening to this, then I'm probably dead. What the? I'm a man who likes to stay informed. I've got mean? subscriptions to newspapers all over the country. Uh huh. A few weeks ago, I noticed headlines cropping up in those papers, one after the other. Each headline about a murder. Uh huh. Each murder, the That's death creepy. of someone I knew almost 20 years ago. Real creepy. And each one drawing closer to Gallows Creek, drawing closer to the anniversary. None of us are innocent, but I don't think we deserve killing. All I hope now. That I can save some folk from the worst. So I maybe can. Clyde isn't the bad guy. I don't know. Do something to make up for what I did back then, I guess. I didn't kill anyone, mind you. Uh huh. But that's past mattering. Now, there's more I could say than I should say. But then say it, hell! My employer. is not going to believe this. Ooh, a new vinyl for my collection. Are y'all putting any of this together? <laughs> All right, let's uh, talk to Peggy, I guess. What have you found, Forrest? A lot, it's hell. It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. Poor George. He was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? Do you think you've met her before? I don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. Found another tape that talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds like he was running for his life. Sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over drive someone to do that i'm not sure yet there's also a tape about a toxicology report there were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything what but everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned it was in the newspaper and everything i found a written autopsy report what does it say according to that it's just like you said at the start george drowned after getting drunk said he liked to fight too I know, and I think I know why. There's a note with a report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia must be our coroner. Wait, the caller from earlier, when we had to call the takeout restaurant, wasn't her name Virginia? We need to call her back once we finish down here. It looks like she might know something about what's going on. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. A car door? Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. Hmm. The written report I found doesn't mention it at all. How did his arm get trapped in a car door after he died? Unless he got it when the police collected his body? I guess someone else must have moved him after he was dead to where he was eventually found. But the report, what is going on here? I found a police report. Mentions a friend from earlier, Sandra Sharp. Sandra, the jazz runner? That's right. She found George's body washed up at the reservoir. The reservoir? Yeah, what's strange about that? George got cuts from running through foliage, right? But there's no forest around there. Also, how did it wash up at the reservoir? What do you mean? Reservoirs don't have tides. But that's what the police report said. It's not possible, though. 
I did a school project on reservoirs and got an A. But, yeah, not important right now. The important thing is that it doesn't make sense. What are you suggesting, then? That the body was originally found somewhere other than what the report suggests. That the sheriff tried to cover it up, but accidentally let something slip? Something like that, I think. Well, Sheriff Matthews wrote the report. If he hadn't been eviscerated, we could have asked him. True. But Sandra is still alive. Once we're done down here, we should give her a call. In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit, where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. So she agrees with us. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded Virginia stop recording. I, I think it was Clive. This is starting to make sense now. This... This is a conspiracy to cover up what happened to George. I, um... I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? I found a confession. Not for any killings, but... for playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Boris, that's dark. I know, but Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident, and the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to save them. Ugh, why didn't he just come out with all of this? Uh, he said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you killed all those people. Do you think you found everything? I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. I'm ready. We need to figure out wait a our minute. next step. Let me grab this. I might need that. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe not. Maybe not. They Thank just God you're back, transferred Forrest. me back up here. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Uh -huh. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. Yeah, I can see I you better really now that I turn that brightness up, Peggy. How am I supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? Um, yeah, it's our job. Hell. This is our job, Peggy. We, we gotta do it. Oh, you're right. Oh. So, what's the plan now? It's like I super bright now. We should call Virginia back. All right, I'll get her on the line. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Alrighty, here we go. Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. Turn me up. Turn them shits up. We're circling up. closer to the truth behind tonight's events. <laughs> to this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. Tell us something, Virginia. Tell us something, Virginia. Hell. Fredman Plunker here. Who's this? Is it you? Goose. No. Plunker, hey, it's the Radio Man, Forrest Nash. Radio Man? What's That's right. Up? Solving mysteries, saving lives. The huge. I need him to get to the point, man. I need him to get to the point. Plunker, what are you doing at Virginia's house? She asked if we could stay to keep an eye out for that whistling mm, turd. Okay, so she invited you so over, huh? hanging out, bro. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's big of you, Plunker. No, <laughs> it's nothing. Why did he snort like Can that? Can I speak to Virginia? Sure thing, radio man. <gasps> I'll just go get her. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's you got a real Forrest. quick, Denny. I'm, I'm glad you're still okay. Oh, Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. All right, let's get to the questions. Uh, 
we need to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry to hear that, but listen, hey, we yeah, need to talk. Yeah, get to the point. Come on now. What about? We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Oh, you know some shite. Come on now. Does the name Clive mean anything to don't you? Don't you hang up that Clive? phone. You know Clive. No. I don't know that name. Yo, ho ass. What are you asking about this You for? know Clive. You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. Exactly. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified, Forrest. No, she Clive's playing. the janitor at our station. She playing. And we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Well, too Virginia, late. We're here now. It's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. <laughs> How do you know this, though? Why well, so certain? We thought so, too. We have evidence. Yeah, why, why are so you so certain, certain Clive's yeah. the whistling man? Because he. All those years ago, he. Uh -huh. It's okay, Virginia. He what? He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he. Well. And we found your autopsy Ooh. reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't well, know if he here. kept yeah. them or made copies or what, but we found oh. them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight. Which is why we called you. Why did hey, you write on. a false report? I... Don't All you... right. You better tell us. One day, I came into work to find a... Oh, a listen, boy shh. on my slab. Listen, listen. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in. And he started making demands to give hmm. over the reports... Okay. To falsify what I found? Of course I said no. But, well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. <laughs> okay. For me, he used both. Oh. You see, my the sister is stick. Okay. sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. It's expensive to treat. And it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment. Who the hell is his employer? If I did what he said. The radio and that station? if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. I Damn. don't know why he had me do it, but... Clive was wilding. My sister needed me. You have to understand. She needed me. We understand. We don't. Okay. Speak uh, for yourself, Peggy. I don't. Yeah, I don't know what they're You helped about. cover up the death of a child. Right. Forrest! But... What you want me to do? She Hell, I don't understand. And my sis... You abused your power to help yourself. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Forrest, that wasn't necessary. <laughs> she it hung needed up on to me. be said. <laughs> she hung up on me. So... Call her back, Peggy. Virginia's Come on now. Tied up and Call all her back. This. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. Mm -hmm. But for who? Why cover up these details? Well, we know Sandra was involved in George's death. Do you want to call her? Yeah, go do. ahead. Might as well. All right, but before we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah, we need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one who discovered it, but mm -hmm. something just doesn't add up. A hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. Hell yeah, I wonder she do. what she's hiding. We'll hopefully find out soon. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. <laughs> All right. And, and, and for jail. Hopefully she she's at her it. jazz studio. Aha, uh -huh. Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? <laughs> Hello again, Sandra. It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. Well, yeah, we're calling Just you now. Tell everybody what you know. You. Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. Why, Forrest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd Dang say right, you, you owe us. Oh, word. Okay. Well, 
let's get to the questions. That sounds really? Nice. Well, yeah. that sounds nice. Mm -hmm. I might just call you back tomorrow then, too. Hell yeah. yeah. You got my number. But what about tonight? Is there Come anything on now. to talk about right now? Mm, Remember yeah. why we called, Forrest? Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know yeah. why the, the, the whistling killings. man might have targeted you? <laughs> <laughs> Try to put the mag down. Shoot my yeah. shot. He was just a knife wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. No. He'd have chased no after anybody. You right. Know well, that, we think he might be chasing specific people. Mm -hmm. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Don't play games, ya bitch. Sandra, we know you found George's body. We have the police report. I... I don't know what you mean. See, they playing. <laughs> don't be a liar. <laughs> it's okay, Sandra. We know... <laughs> don't you be do a liar. You know about? Uh, yes. Of course. <sighs> this studio is my life. Uh-huh, yeah, come on, After tell I us more. I found the body in the river... Do you understand? Yep, we understand. Uh, yeah. Sure. I I'm gonna be gentle so but we can get the information. Just kept going up. He said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet, and everything would be okay. Uh. Was Sandra. It? Who was he? Yeah, he tell was... us. He said, if I told everyone I found the kid in the reservoir instead of the river. Who he, was he? Hell! Uh, Spit it out! I'm sorry. I can't do this. You can. Come on. Oh, you bitch. And they all hang enough on me. I don't think that could have gone any better. <laughs> you truly did great, Forrest. Oh, well, folks, come if on, anyone man. out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. Okay. Of course we do. All right, who's on the Welcome line? One eighty-nine point sixteen. You're on the, the screen scream and all that. Come host, on, talk Forrest to us. Nash. Hi, Boris. I know this is really out of the blue with everything <clears throat> happening tonight. You sound but like I Dracula, Count Dracula. Special <laughs> birthday message to my uncle. No. No, I don't wanna. Oh, come on! It's his birthday. I won't have a chance to do it again until next year. May as well, Forrest. Too bad. Uh, fine. What's his name? Thank you, Boris. He's <laughs> my Ronnie. uncle Ronnie. His first name's Peter, but okay. he never liked his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always call These characters him call it in is uh, thanks for the history lesson. Yeah. Is there anything Hang besides happy birthday? You'd like to man. say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my God, damn it! Yes, tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza. Start hanging, you, you son of a bitch! Stop calling us! God damn it, Peggy! This is your fault. My fault? I said I didn't want to do it. Don't blame me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. <sighs> Don't worry, we've already got another caller on the line. Just pick it up, okay? Well, somebody call with something actually important? Good God. This is 189.16. Put it together, 16, man. The Scream. Jeez. Force Nash. You're on the air, caller. <laughs> caller. Is this a dog? You need some Alpo, puppy? <sighs> is that a laugh? Wait a minute. It is. Ponty. I'm leaving. 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 Forrest? This is ridiculous. Forrest? Are you okay? Nope, I'm not. <sighs> Forrest? I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Hey, that's hilarious. Jesus, Forrest? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That was. That it was is too fair. Much. It's fair. It's okay. It's been a high stress night. It's absolutely Don't worry fair. About him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. Did that go I think in? he's spent for now. We've got another call. Whenever you're ready. Somebody call with some important information. 
Please. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> all I'm going to say exactly. about that. Exactly. Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who, may I say, is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Oh, Dawn. this is Dawn. Okay. Ah, I bet I know why you're calling. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't play your song. There's a lot going on. But please? Uh, never mind that now. Oh. First, I'm calling because I need your help. Of course. Of course. Are you in danger? Please, who's next? I should dog her out. Are you in danger? I should dog oh, I her sure out. Am. Uh huh. Do you mean. Yes, he's after me now. You? Are you I on think the board? So. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. I don't trust it. I don't see you're on the board. Hmm. Helping? You didn't exactly help. Mm -hmm. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. Okay. After Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. I came back to my apartment. She lied. She lied. The fangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Use Don't you have key. a key to get in? Use Only a key. Only the apartment door. The front gate requires an entry code. I don't the trust it. Is electronic, I guess. I don't trust it. I need that code to get inside. Which apartment block do you live in? <laughs> nah. Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. Nope. I don't it's trust it. It's a new Woodside apartment building between town hall and a trailer park. But I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. Sound Wait, what really the hell carries the night. Uh, not a dog person, a neighbor's dog, noisy part of town. Yeah, neighbor's is dog. Is that a neighbor's dog? Yes, it is. Boy, I wish he'd muzzle that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. Bro, it's what is kidding. happening right now? What? What is happening? What God, the heck is happening? I don't think he's seen me yet. Forrest, please. Nah, because I don't hear his whistling. That security system, or I'm going to die. I ain't helping. Nope, I don't trust her. What's your neighbor's name? Yeah. No, my neighbors, remember? Please, I need to get in. Can you? Get yeah, your neighbor's I don't attention? trust it. Uh huh. This white man will see me, Forrest. I can't do that. What's the name of the security system? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad. And it looks like it wants a, a six-digit number. That's probably them things that I've seen downstairs. Uh, Starling, a lot of digits. Starling, huh? Starling Security 4000, huh? That's right. Very newly installed. I need the key code before the whistling man gets me. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. I don't Thank trust you. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. <laughs> Why she so? I'll sight. Call me back soon. I don't like this. All right, man. folks. I don't Here's like a it. Tune for you all to enjoy, while I try to break Dawn into her apartment. All right, just turn the damn music on. Hell. Why she ain't you got no thing to her there, apartment? Peggy. You know what I mean? Forest, I don't like that. Was it just me, or was there something weird? Yes. It wasn't just you. Something was weird. Very weird about, about that. that. I don't yeah. trust her. Well, and we didn't hear the whistling what, man. We have he a whistled Starling loud 4, as hell. or whatever here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. I know well, it's downstairs. I didn't sure bring it upstairs is. with me. But to help someone. All right, so I'm gonna run downstairs, get this. <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside quick. Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling Four Thousand. Yep, I knew I should have brought those papers up here. I was being an idiot and didn't. So I'm gonna grab the papers real quick and then uh, run back upstairs. All right, so here's my theory. This is my theory. Dawn is the mother of the 18-year-old who died. She knows they covered it up, so now she's the actual whistling man going after everybody who covered the whole thing up. 
That's what it is. Dawn is the whistler, man. That's all I'm saying. That's what I think it is. <laughs> She's trying to get into that apartment to kill somebody. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security man. Oh. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? I saw a list of everyone else who bought the Starling 4000. Know who was on there? Oh my god. Roller Ricky. I Who the hell do you is think we should give Ricky? him a call? Is that crazy? I don't know what you'd say, but uh, yeah, tell him somebody's trying to kill him. Yep, call him. That might be a good idea. Give him a call. Okay, one moment. Tell him Don about I to come the in there and kill here. his ass. Ooh, Patching you through. Let's go. Huh? Shit. He probably can't hear it over the music. What music? Forrest, I don't know about this. This is mm -hmm. super it weird. It is weird. Just put me through to Don. I'll take care of this one way or another. Okay. If you say so. All right, here when we go. When you're ready, yep. shut the music off. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep Line forgetting. one. I keep Whenever you're ready. Go, go, go. I say go. Come on now. Done. Are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The mm -hmm. Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Something ain't right about this, man. Something is not right. Uh, give maintenance call code. Alarm test warning. This will set off all security measures. Alarm test deactivation. I'm going to give it a wrong code. <laughs> give it a maintenance code. The code is 311 And then she's going to get pissed off and show Thank her true code. Rest. Y'all see how she said thank you? Thank you, Well, I'll just do this the hard way. Uh-huh. No. Forrest, what did we do? She out here bad. It's Dawn. She the crazy one. No. She killed the dog. Damn. Man, somebody bucking oh shots. God, I... What the? F oh, hey, what is happening right now? Ricky, Ricky, what? hello. Force? Is that you? Did you have something to do with this? Uh, why Ricky, would I have something? Whoever to do with that this? was, she was trying to get into the building. I tried to help, but. She, Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him. Huh? That was the whistling man. The girl is Dawn, I told you. Gave me just enough time to get my rifle. Oh, man, I... Maxie, I'm coming, I buddy. knew it. It was Dawn the Forrest, whole time. I've got to go. I've got to go. Come on, Maxie. Stay strong. Okay. <laughs> the dog? The Gallows Creek. Here's some music while we process what just happened. We know what just happened. Hell, Dawn is the killer. So the whistling man is a woman? That's right. I know. I can't believe it. Yeah, I worked it out a while ago. Yeah, I worked it out a while ago. <laughs> just lie. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just <laughs> never mentioned it. That's right. Damn it. That's she right. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. Mm-hmm. I knew she wasn't right. I knew she wasn't right. Yeah. Is that right, Sherlock? That's damn right. Why Call me Sherlock Holmes. That song? Maybe that's you want to get me outside to mess with us. To get me outside? Mm -hmm. Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. No, she That's knew. Right. She knew something. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay. Kill the music and you can make the announcement. All right. Great. Let's get okay, to it. Okay. You're live in three, two... Take my mic. Hey, folks. We this good? is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. The woman is a killer. Get away from her. We now believe the killer is actually a woman. One who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. I'm sad to say, but it's time to trust no one. <laughs> yeah, don't trust I'm Sad anyone. to say. Not even Peggy. But it's time to trust no one. 
The killer was calling themselves Don. Don't trust anyone called Don. This could be a fake this name. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a it's a fake name. name. Come on if now. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. <laughs> Hopefully, <funny>. our <laughs> next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. Of course. All right, let's see uh, who we have on the line. Who is on the line call now? On line one. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a hey, 25 Nancy I just Nancy can't get child. over calling the radio stabbed. station he's, for help. He's it's ridiculous. Everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Um, well, it, it doesn't make sense to ask what happened because, I mean, she told us. Her friend got stabbed. Uh, is he still breathing? Is he still breathing? He, yeah, but, but he's bleeding out fast. Uh -oh. I really need uh -oh. help. Uh-oh. Uh, wrap something Take around it. Make it tight. We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling oh, all of a sudden. Heading back to his place, huh? Just started freaking out. Hit it back to his he place for a little. He told me to hide. I'd never Netflix seen him like that, and I, I just panicked mm -hmm. and ran and hid in the bush. Not paying oh, attention no. to her. Oh no, Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. Uh huh. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like Try to turn he might have known the person, and they just stabbed him. Hmm. May have known the person. Okay. Casey, was it a was woman? Was he talking to a woman? I don't know. They had a man. I'll get you help, but I need to know are we gonna where did the masked help? person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. Well, of course, they're I a murderer. They what are you? Gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. Hmm. I think I heard them say something like, it's not so funny now, is it? Before they left, but. Okay. We'll take his ass I to the hospital. Drive, so we need an ambulance. Sorry, we don't have Forest. one. Save yourself. The ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. Uh-huh. You should get all the info you can. Uh, what's your friend's name? Where is he hurt? Doesn't what's matter. What's your friend's name, Casey? It doesn't Jason, matter. He's stabbed. Jason That's all that Parker. matters. Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach. In the stomach. They stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground. And Damn. Stabbed him in the we'll leg right after in the stomach. Patches That's just petty. The hospital. petty. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Turn this whole Switch up. to line two. All right. The first time we've ever used line two. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. Why is he doing the intro? <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy <laughs> Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God. I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know. Yeah, blew up. I know. know. But uh -huh. Please, we need something, or he's going to die. Forrest, I. Listen, you're going to have to get him here. Wait, what? We need to see him, and we can't get there ourselves. Right I'm gonna have to get him there. We don't there? have any way to drive him right <laughs> My now. Gosh. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. Uh huh. That means stopping the blood first. Yeah. And then finding someone to stabilize him. Okay. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. None of us have. Do either of you have any? No. no. Me neither. Uh, damn it. And I'm sure the lady really on the phone doesn't this, either. But I have other patients who can't wait. Fair enough. All I can do is talk you through Switch the over. procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. You think you can handle that? Uh, yeah, we don't have don't much really of a choice. choice. Like, come on. Hit me. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, uh -huh. then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Okay. Lay him down. Yeah. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. That's what I said, pressure. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Gotcha. Get them comfortable. Get them comfortable. Apply, Apply pressure. pressure. Clean, clean cloths. Clean cloths when slowed. There you go. One, two, three. Got it. One, two, three. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? In the stomach the and leg. The he was stabbed with is still in him. Don't take it out. Okay. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. <laughs> secure it? It makes sense, Okay. Though. God, that was a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. Yeah, we got, it. got it. And so let's far, get to uh, revealing go. who the character is. I'd like to get there at some point, you know? Are you sure you can't stay? Uh, I can't keep up. Keep going. Yeah. I'm still with you, Doc. 
It's what fine. Else do we need to know? I'll figure it out. It's if he's okay. If lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. Mm -hmm. If he does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Gotcha. Just apply another on top of it. Okay. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Elevate the legs. Try to keep vital him warm. organs. Keep get him, him to warm. rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. Uh -huh. <sighs> All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Elevate legs. Keep him warm. Warm and, and calm. calm. Got you. Boots got you. This is a lot. I'm really Five sorry. minutes later, he's dead. That's as much as I can give you right now. <laughs> Can't stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. I got you, nurse. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on yep. line one. Yep, I'm, I'm huh? already on it. Come on. Huh? Forrest, are you there? We're on our own. Casey, I have bad news. We're on our own for now. Sorry, not no, sorry. No. But we got Jason. you. We got you. Don't panic. How the hell did Casey? I do anything? No, Casey, you did the right thing. We got advice from somebody at St. Gabriel's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on, come on, this. come on, come on. We got oh, it. Let's get to God. it. I've been putting pressure on a stomach wound since you left. All right, you know what? But he's still Person bleeding. Going. I don't know what to do. That's good, Get a little Casey. background music. The nurse you know said I mean? to do that. What about the knife in his leg? Leave it's it. It's got to be hell. Should I pull it out? No, 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 no. Don't touch the knife. No, don't I'm gonna help her out. I'm gonna help her out. I ain't gonna tell her to pull it out. Pause. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. Yeah, no, that's a good don't idea, worry, Casey. Casey. We're a team here. <laughs> We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. Uh huh. His stomach is worse. Makes though. sense. Yeah. Uh huh. Um. Secure the knife. There you go. Secure the knife. See, so I remember, man. This is easy. Come on now. Do you have anything you can tie around it? Uh, yeah. There's some laundry piled up on top of the dryer. Yep. Mm hmm. Go ahead and use that. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, I guess I've got my jacket. Use the cleaning rags. <laughs> yeah, use the, uh,. Why would we put some dirty car cleaning rags on them? Yeah, use the laundry. That's fine. Look in the laundry for something like a towel or a shirt. Hold that over the wound. Well, I guess we don't okay. need the background music since the music is playing. Looks like I'm going to have to buy you some new whites, Jason. We're going to shoot we some go. boots while she's still doing her thing. What up? I'm sorry, what? Jason. It's Ooh, secure. Two in a row. Let's go. I put pressure on his stomach again. Okay, yeah, that's good. I'm Do the pressure. That's excellent. Forrest, uh -huh. can I have a word? Uh, sure. Casey, Go for it. I'm gonna uh -huh. have a quick word with Peggy. Keep oh. putting that pressure oh. on, and let us know when the bleeding is under control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're doing great. You're doing what awesome. If something happens. Uh, we'll still be there. then Just it's fine. If you need anything, we'll see him at the crossroads. And we'll be there. Oh. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Oh. Jason, please be okay. All right. What's up, Peggy? What you want? What you want? What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? All right, you know what? Right. I'm sick of all these people. Reveal the She's damn killer. On her way How to about the next that? Right now. What exactly. if her next target is? And you big? heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. Mm -hmm. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. I know this. Um, she'll have to drive him because somebody there. But yeah, she's she got to drive there was him. She a car yeah. there. I know she doesn't know how to drive. But Figure it out, we damn it. We may not have a choice. Forrest, that's a terrible idea. No, it's not. Never mind hurting Jason. She might get herself or someone else killed. No, she'll be fine. <sighs> Don't suppose you have any ideas then? <laughs> he sighed. I got might. tired of her. A little before you started working here, mm. KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I, Whoop. never mind. Whoop. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Word. Nancy Drive, right? Yeah, why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Ooh. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably. 25 Nancy Drive there. is what she said. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows Ooh, first aid. From down could you call down. Them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. I can't tell if they were Everybody's there. personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. Oh it's my god! Are you situation. kidding me? Come I'm on, sure really? Right. Seriously? But there are a couple of problems with that. Like what, Peggy? <sighs> yeah, that's how I'm feeling. Exactly. It's sensitive information, 
so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Uh huh. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. Didn't you I'm just say like that? This, am I? Have you ever heard the future is floppy? <laughs> Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Okay. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. What year is this again? You put them in a computer and they do something. Mm -hmm. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. Anyway, Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records uh -huh. and replacing them with these floppy disks. Oh, yeah. I imagine Turned it's the same tapes, for our personnel CDs. files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. Of I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. <sighs> Why does have Peggy have all the damn keys in there? I don't understand that. She has all of the keys in there, and I made that. Good. I'll patch my mic down to all the right, office. All right, cool. Fine. So you'll hear me over the intercom. Yep, uh huh, got you. There go. All right, where does this go to? Hell. Reggie's office key. Master of unlocking. All right, let's head down to Reggie's office. Okay, so Reggie's office. Here we go. Let's see what we got in Reggie's office. From below it came. I want to believe. Ha! Ah, from X Files. Hey Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm right, here. Let's see what we got. Did you find what we need? I can't figure out I'm how to get into this stupid in safe. Notes. No worries, you still have a little time. Reggie writes almost everything down somewhere. Uh huh. I'd recommend you start reading. I'll have a look around. You're probably right. I'll let you know when I find something. Yep. Don't. Okay, let's see. Oh, there's a floppy disk. Might want to keep that. Looks like I need a four digit code. That's right. Put that hoe up in there. Hey, let's go. What does this Could say? Could this be it? That's not a four digit code. Deep cuts, top secret. Pizza delivery killer who kills with the pizza cutter. Free slice on me, terrifying. Terrifyingly, there is never any pizza. What happened to the original delivery guy? Maybe write him in the final girl's boyfriend. She's smart, beautiful, blah, blah, blah. Takes place on 11-7, very important date for the town. Uh, let's try 11-7. Let's see if that'll work. One, one, zero, seven. Nice. Hey, we in that here. We in that bit. We is in that bit. I'm in, Peggy. I found the floppy disks. Just uh -huh. put it in the slot, right? You got it. Remember, we need somebody with medical training who lives near 25 Nancy Drive. Let me know when you've got somebody. And don't waste time on anybody that can't help us. Hold on. What the f... What was... <laughs> what was... <laughs> So I'm thinking John is going to be able to want, be able to be the one to help us because it says here that he has first aid training already and he would like has a bunch of medical equipment. So John Hedges is who we're going to go with. Yeah, we're going to go with old John Hedges. Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? Yeah, 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 yeah. I did. Uh, I think I know who to call. I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. Mm -hmm. All right, good work. Who should I... How am I hearing Please her? Pick up. Wait, Casey, what? I'm here. What's wrong? <laughs> How am I hearing her? All right, I we got you. Well, I'm what sure happened? he's in a lot of pain here. Uh, did he have booze earlier? He's going into shock. God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Casey, just get him comfortable. Stay calm. It's <laughs> going to be okay. No, you didn't Jason, mess I'm up, sorry. Casey. It's okay. Casey, calm down. Stay You've calm, done everything relax. right. I, Come on now. I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Um, uh, elevate Jason's wounds. What? Casey, <laughs> I need you to elevate. How do you Jason's elevate his legs. wounds? We need to get the blood flowing <laughs> to his vital organs. Got it. Jason, stay with me. Uh huh. <laughs> A lot of it, baseballs. Okay, 
It's like the mug in uh, what is it, Scott's office from um, the office. Well, I'm just trashing this dude's office. This picture right here. There you go. No, nah, don't get a new one. Just apply uh, some other ones. Apply an additional bandage. There you go. Don't remove the bandage. Oh, apply see, another this is one easy, on top man. Of it. Come on now. You still have Got an amazing memory. It's simple. I'm taking these floppies with me. Uh huh. Yep, that's what you need Hold to on, do. Uh. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Here, I'm going to read these while she's kind of doing her thing. Probably not. He'll be fine. Uh, he's going to be fine. Be strong for Jason. It's not looking good. <laughs> Jason is going to be fine. Oh, that's Just terrible. Just make sure he knows he's going to be okay. Okay? Okay. Please. I can't give him what he needs. Please. I can't listen to him. All right, Forrest. We need to hurry. Jason doesn't sound like he's doing too well. You said you knew who to call earlier? Uh-huh. Who was it? John Hedges. There you go. We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. Mm -hmm. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. There he's you go. He's probably the most trained person we have. Uh huh. Really? I never really spoke to him before. He's a war medic, huh? Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. Yep. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's the number? Uh, five four two zero seven three five. I'm glad that uh, he oh, remembered because I totally That's didn't okay. remember that. Damn, she called him quick. What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. Mm -hmm. We have an emergency and we need your help. And I'm coming back upstairs. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. <laughs> I'll be pissed, pissed too, like hell. Else. <laughs> uh, this is a medical emergency. Somebody has been stabbed. The whistling man is back. Uh, yeah, there we John, go. John, no, this is a medical emergency. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or never mind. He, he's badly hurt, and he's going to die unless we get someone to him now. Whistling man. What kind of joke is this? It's not a joke at all. Somebody's been stabbed. Get over there, Jonathan. Well, what we're calling on you now. He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. I don't know why I'm doing this. You know the extent of his injuries? Bored. What we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Just looking for something to do while they talk. There you go, John. Oh, you, look John. at old John well, from the military. Oh, military John. Hello, Casey, are you there? How are we doing? Bad. All right, let's see. Yeah, I mean, he's losing a lot of blood there. Uh, how is he now? What about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me about someone Yep, to we're help. sending somebody Casey your way now. He's on the way. My colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming. You're going to shut up. Just hold on for me, okay? Just hold on. Come on. Whoa. Uh, oh, okay. I guess I had, I thought I had to respond. Casey, I'm gonna need your help. Forrest and Peggy, don't you two worry. We've got this from here. Okay. Forrest, we'll call you back later. I have to go now. Uh, don't worry about it. You don't have to call back. It's all right. Just don't. No, don't call back. It's okay. And with that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. He's talking like he's on the radio right now. You're downstairs in the office. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Uh, come back <laughs> upstairs. 
<laughs> this is ridiculous. I am ready. All right. Or we can go back outside. Ain't a damn thing out here, so it's fine. Damn, it just closed on me. What song should I play? I don't think it really matters, Forrest. It doesn't really matter what song you play. Okay, let's just play what's already on there. And talk Getting to Peggy some more. This might be your Getting last late. for the night. So what are you talking about? Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. All right, cool. Let's, Let's go back roll. on air. You got it. <laughs> We've got another call coming through, too. <sighs> All right, Time to of course. Turn the music we off. Yep, I got you. I don't like how you said that real forcefully like that, Peggy. Welcome Relax. back to 189.16, The Scream. Mm -hmm. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? From downtown. Forrest, man. Hey, it's Roll Ricky. Good to hear from you again. Uh, how you holding up after everything? Ooh, almost. Is Maxie okay? Maxie is a little fighter, man. I just know he's going to pull through. Did that go in? I think our roller show might be canceled tomorrow, though. Right here, right here. Uh, I'm oh. sorry again. Oh, about come on now. How that went. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some Get in there, get in there, get in there. What's that? Oh? What's that? You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You uh -huh. know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. Of course. I mean, this is a small town. I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. All right. And Runner what Ricky. does that have to do with tonight? <laughs> well, because Did George, I think that the guy either. who drowned, he was on our team, too. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, Tell me about him. Keep talking. Keep talking. Yeah. What happened? We had our first team party on the night he drowned. Mm hmm He seemed like such a good dude. Mm -hmm. Ricky. Were you there when George drowned? Why did I shoot no, it that man. short? Once the party turned, I beat feet out of there. Turned? Man, what did you mean by that? I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? Uh, tell me about her. What's her name? Ricky, please. What was her name? I never got her name, man. Of course. Of She's course. Or see her after that. Then what did she look like? Please tell us anything you remember. Get in I that hole. Get in that girl, hole. Man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were getting that hole. Just having a good time. And then it's ridiculous. The next thing I knew, everyone was running for their life. I looked up. Uh-huh. And saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees. Did they go in? And I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home. Didn't know about George until next morning at school. Word. I'm That's crazy, guessing huh? it was whistling night, wasn't it? Whistling night? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. Huh? I don't know how George That definitely went in. I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, Ooh, let's go. it should have been me. Why is that, Ricky? And why should it have been you? Uh, it wasn't your fault. That's horrible. Maybe if you hadn't run. Yeah, uh, that's horrible. Whatever. Can't believe they did that to you all. Yeah. Huh. But they did. <laughs> but they and did. And it took a long time to get over that, but... Oh. Yeah. Just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Which Ricky. wasn't this much, helps. Ricky. You got Hell. it, man. Anyway. I think it's time for me and Max to free up your phone lines. Thanks. Night, Ricky. Ooh, uh, get in there. Right, get folks. in that hole. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. Do we? If know? anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late thirties now. Uh huh. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in. But if this is another damn on. person for help. What's I'm going to lose it. Peggy? Peggy? You're going to want to take this call off the air. For Who what? is it? Just do it. All right, folks. What it's is happening time right for now? another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. Oh. We'll be right back after this. All right. 
Same song. Yep, go ahead and... Eat. Oh, uh, I didn't. <laughs> I hope this I is the wrong news, button. Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. If this is the pizza dude again, I'm throwing my PC. I'm throwing it out the Hello? window. Forrest, I'm glad I got back through to you. Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? Surprise! It's Leslie. Uh, yeah, it's been a busy operator, night. Hell. Leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. How's she gonna okay? save us? We're doing okay. She left us to fend for ourselves this whole damn time. Home. We're happy to have you too. I... Uh -oh. Wait, Sara? Oh, yeah, I mean Deputy Martinez. Uh, anyway, we got back into radio mm -hmm. range a little while ago. We've been listening in, but haven't been able to get through it till now. Wait, what? So help is on the it's way? Yeah, Scott, like what the hell is happening? Left. Please tell us you're bringing help. You bet. I'm leading a whole goddamn squad towards Gallows Creek as we speak. I don't know if I believe it. Turns out somebody had cut the phone lines. They had no idea what was happening. Yep. That's great news. Oh, come on. That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't hole. know how he, he didn't hit hole. How she, how the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot. Okay, we who's in on this? Who's in on I this? I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town. Yes. But if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Whistling or, man or woman. That's where you come in. Uh, yeah, haven't we helped enough? Hell. Haven't we helped enough? I mean, now that you're back. Right, do your damn job. Forrest, ignore him, Leslie. No, no, we'll no, this ain't it our job. Us to do. It's radio right. host. Forrest. Thanks, Peggy. It might be a long shot, but here goes. Uh-huh, I'm listening. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. Do we know We're still that, a little ways out of town. Do we know so she calls stall her buy as much time as you can for us to get in and uh -huh. while you're talking to her try to figure out where she is okay we'll be listening in so once her location is known we'll head straight there and end this nightmare i'm not rolling i'm not rolling uh yeah i'll do, I'll my, do best, my best whatever i know you will heck i can see the headlines now morris nash's interview of a lifetime i just love anyway, how I'll like they just seem so casual about like all these murders happening in their little Hopefully town. The next time I see you, this is crazy. Killer behind bars. Oh. Take care now. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. Why do we? It sounds like this is there? almost over. We're nearly through this. I doubt it. Uh, let's get back on the air. I hope you're right. I don't think it's going to be that easy. I hope you're right. The pessimist in me wanted over, to say that. The better. I am right. Trust me. Anyway, we should get you it. back on air. She's not right. Taking callers is the only way to see this through. How is that okay, the Forrest, only way to see this off. through? What? Bringing you back live. The cops yeah. need to do Welcome their job. The that is not the only way me, to see Forrest this through. Nash. The line is lit up. But before I get to our next caller, I just want to say things are looking up. There's only up. one call. Come it's in. almost it's over. It's not lit up like but that. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. All right, here we go. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. Mm -hmm. I'm here with Casey. Awesome. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. Okay. John! Is, is he going to be okay? John! He's a fighter. He'll be fine. That's awesome, John. Got him stabilized and resting in a bed. We're preparing cool. to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much. If you hadn't been there, <laughs> this then... This is crazy. God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. <laughs> We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us. I'm going to be in for there now. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? Yes, it is. The one and only. The one and only. I hope you're feeling better. Why did I say it's just good like to him? hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my oh. leg, but... John gave me something to take the edge off. So he <laughs> gave that boy some weed or something. A couple of edibles. <laughs> take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. Oh, come on. But, so much uh, arch on that. Before that, I, I needed to call you. I'm guessing the whistling man is still out there. Or a woman. 
Uh, why do you ask, John? Hmm? Yes, the Whistling Man's still out there. Yeah. Why do you ask? You know something about the Whistling Man, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do. All right, so Can talk we to talk us. about what happened earlier? Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not huh? long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he all right? Yes. He is now. I mean, he was attacked what? earlier, but his call home. came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. At that caller, Jason got some sure information. I just have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, oh. Where was I? Oh. Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds Give like everything's hold. finally coming out now. Hmm? It's everything's been tough coming out. To hold it all in. What you mean? Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. Yeah, talk to us, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead. Okay, shh, shh, listen, listen, listen. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. And then the town just moved on like he'd never existed. Uh, did you kill him? Why would I ask him that? Yeah, what happened? What happened that night? I went along with the stupid prank, that's what. Whistling night. Mm -hmm. Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. Okay. We decided to plan a party in the woods and have the whistling man crash it. It was mm -hmm. stupid. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. At the party that night, I left the group for a second. Met our whistling man. Pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone. Started an almighty panic. Those screams. Mm -hmm. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. Okay. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead. So none of y'all really have any information is what I he's saying. Scream, Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean. Oh yeah. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. And when was that? Her name was What? What happened? Are we still on air? Of course. And I'm going to have to go outside and turn on? it back on. I don't, um, oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Reggie picked it up a while ago in case he ever needed to do an emergency broadcast. Mm -hmm. An emergency broadcast? Emergency, you know, nuclear war. <laughs> Alien attack. Okay. I didn't. I sure didn't. Oh, I do remember that. Do you have a flashlight, Peggy? You don't. Okay. Well, here we go. Uh, I'm pretty sure the killer's going to be down here. So prepare yourselves for this big scare, finally. Tuck off in here. There it is right there. Y'all remember seeing that it. earlier? Mm -hmm. Oh, we've got power. There go the whistling man. The whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. Um. Well, Peggy's locked in her office, so why do we need to warn her? She is locked in her office. Hey, yo, Peggy. Peggy, are you there? The whistling are man you? woman is here. Peggy. I need to get back upstairs. Okay. Peggy. Is working with the whistling man or woman. We're not sure yet which one. But I thought I saw something on the other side of that door. That was what the hell? Yeah, what was that? I don't know what that was. <laughs> and I'm not going to investigate. Come on now, I'm black. Black people, we don't do that. We don't go investigate loud bangs and noises. Nope, not today. Not today. Is that door open? We just gonna go ahead and leave, Peggy. We can't. Okay. Well. 
go ahead and head in here see what we got oh oh no hey yo piggy Peggy, where'd you go did you got coffee and stuff hmm? what the lock no the way. door this can't be damn anything. you strong okay what's that what you point at what, what, what was that that you pointed at there Oh, go ahead, speak to me. A, a call. I'm listening. Uh-huh. Where's Peggy? What do you want? Where's Peggy, Don? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. Oh, but is that right? It's not over just yet. Uh-huh. Got a little time still. Okay, what are we doing? So let's make the most of it. Mm-hmm. Well, let's make the most of it. I agree. Uh, what do you mean? I'd rather not... <laughs> I'd rather, rather not. not if that's okay. <laughs> Is this thing on? Can oh. you hear me, Peggy? Don? Huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. Okay, who's that? The one who Peggy? started it all. Oh, oh, let me take that out of your mouth. And... You mm -hmm. crazy bitch! Hold on. Let me go! Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Mm -hmm. Wait. It's all good. Okay. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But even if he crawled out of his coffin with all the money in the world. Mm -hmm. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. It's Peggy. I'm here with Teddy. Uh-huh. And he says where that is, well, he knows he'll get it. Give what? What you giving him? But you're here. Then who's here? Wait, then... Who am I? It's Peggy. Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallant's Creek. Uh-huh. To my boy, Henry Barrow. Who? Your son? This is a lot. Your, your son? <laughs> you mean you... Wait, that the, the he... Wait, yes, huh? Yes, hmm? Forrest. He and I had a son. Oh, you and George. So okay. Two whistling men tonight. One man, one woman. Of course. Woman. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. Hang on. Did you say... Barrel? That... Are you... Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. <laughs> this is so Don't ridiculous. Mooney went crazy wearing this. Mooney? Who the hell is Mooney? <sighs> there we go. Who's Mooney? Marie, Marie Campbell? George is old girl. Oh. <laughs> well, sure. Old Marie. Years since I last saw. Oh, God damn. Damn. Slap damn. the hell out of him. Unlock this door. You unlock this door now. Uh, not Don, huh? Uh, where's this going? Yeah, where's this going? Where are you going with Come all on of now. this? What are we doing? Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. I ain't got nothing to do with this. He killed George. Listen to me. You. Ah. You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest. Throw this hot ass pot of coffee. You chance okay. to talk. Okay. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. Okay. Well, that's fine with me. I don't. Sure. Why not? Why should I? I won't do it. Yeah. Okay. I'll do it. It's, it's okay. Yeah. I'll do it. Good. Then let's talk about the night George was murdered. Okay. Shh, shh, listen. Murdered? Oh, listen. I... Damn. I said you speak when you're spoken Marie to. got hands, boy. <laughs> Gave that boy now, a combo. I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing mm -hmm. together what happened to George 20 years ago. And that's why I want you to interview us. Hmm, okay. Uh... Sure. If you say so. Fine I'm with me. Not really in a position to argue. I'm happy we exactly. Your We're locked in a room. I'm, I mean, what am I supposed to do? And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. Well, what about Peggy? She ain't did nothing. I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, Shh, and your mic is on, if cub. I can find out where Marie is, your mic is on. Then this can end. Teddy, we'll like, keep that in your you. head, man. Don't say that out loud. Just, uh, Talk me through what happened that night. 
How did it start? How would I know? It was Just 20 years here. ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, hit him, Marie. Be honest, Teddy. Do you want to die? <laughs> Say, hit him, Marie. Hit him again, Marie. Uh, <laughs> what the hell? God you know what happened, damn it. Okay. There you go. Uh huh. Our Apply first a little force. Team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. Yep, uh huh. Whistle night, right? Uh, the night Mooney vanished. Tell me why that, okay. Yeah. I understand that kids in Gallows Creek know tonight as whistling night. Mm hmm. I'm guessing that's what you mean? Well, we didn't have a name for it then. It was just a night that Mooney went missing. But whistling night is what they'd call it later. Wait. You mean this was the first whistling night? I, uh, keep talking, Teddy. Come on now, Teddy. Went Speak up. up. Near Whistling Point. Uh, God, I was there. We try to catch it. Me, Jason, and George. The whole out here. But George didn't come alone. Me, Rod, Marie, and Roller Ricky. Catch that. He hole. was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know, because I'm a decent man. Is that Ooh, so? Look at that yes, boy catching that hoe out there. He came Not that time. One day, some people do. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life, so I helped him keep himself together. You, know, you were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. I looked up at the trees and saw Jason there, bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man <laughs> screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. Me and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. Uh, no, Ricky didn't know. Did you ask Ricky? And so, yeah, Ricky didn't know. No, Marie, you're wrong. Ricky didn't know. What? Did you miss that part of the broadcast? Yeah, I your whole ass early. wasn't listening. He had no idea what was happening. Uh -oh. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, Just a prank. Go to hell. Hit him, Marie. Hit him again, Marie. <laughs> God, God. <laughs> Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. <clears throat> sense to die earlier. I going to regret that. Wow, okay. Enough about him. Not that I'm helping her too, George though. took off running, but somehow we got separated in the mm -hmm. woods. Yeah, y'all was in the woods. I, I mean, that's easy to do. I was at the bottom of Whistling Point. When I George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me. I scream, and he starts laughing. Stall for time here. Uh, who was it? What happened next? How did you feel? Yeah, there you go. How did you feel in that moment? That'll be a good way to keep like her talking. Nothing was real. Whenever you want somebody to just keep talking, ask them how they feel. Confused. Oh, and... Who was under the mask? What happened next? Tell me what happened next. I suddenly recognized it was Chuck. Oh. 
Chuck. Not Chuck. Laughing away. I forgot who Chuck is. But then he stops. And he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. Mm -hmm. What was he looking at? <laughs> oh, poor Marie. Teddy, what happened next? Nothing. I mean, it was just... Teddy? George fell off Whistling Point. Uh, where were you? How do you know? Why'd he fall? Why'd he fall, Teddy? He just... You pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the Whistling Man, too, and... I didn't push him! God damn it! I just chased him up there, and... Hey. He kept backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar! It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd had any brains, he would have realized. Oh, he about to die. Ugh. That man talking crazy. You bitch. No one's going to believe this. After all you did. Uh, I believe her. Then why the cover-up? Even if you didn't push him. Hmm. If she's lying. Yeah, then why the cover-up? Why the cover-up? My future. Was at stake, Ash. You know what it's like. People like us are for bigger things. I'm going to be the mayor of this town. No, you're not. You're probably and not. And then governor. And then who knows? Maybe president? What Doubtful. That night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke. Gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Uh huh. Why should a blip ruin my future? Well, you ruined it even more George now, Teddy. Uh, yeah, I'm just not gonna say anything on that. I'm gonna just let that ride. <laughs> His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night. Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect there. Teddy. She said something about her rent it's going gone. up. Unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp Creek. Trying to get out of here. Uh, yeah, answer the question. I'd answer the question if I were you, Teddy. Yes, okay. We own the most of the town. That's it then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. Mm, I mean, I that's guess that's fair. You killed Sheriff Matthews too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Damn. Was Everybody was in on it? That he just got himself into trouble. It's a terrible town. I saw. I'm, Jeez. I'm sorry. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't hey, have much of a choice. Long as hell to get here. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't it afford. So long. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even, even still. She should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper. But no, that coward killed the story. But Maurice Russell is dead now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've been through hell. This has to stop. This has to stop, Marie. Never. <laughs> started. <laughs> she can't get a crap out of him. A sec. Where's Marie holding Teddy hostage? Um, 
school gym. Hell, I don't know. Gallows Creek High in the gymnasium. <laughs> That's right, Forrest. Not that it matters, but yes, we're here. All right, anyway, we'll send the cops there. Took the swing for Teddy Gallows. Interview with Teddy. So. Marie, where? Hold on, did she shoot him? <laughs> Peggy. Teddy? Where the hell is Peggy you at? Gotta help me. I... Quiet. And where? Yeah, where's we'll Peggy? Talk more later. Now I have to talk to someone who mattered more than you ever did. Okay, now. Peggy. Get to the point now, Peggy or it's Marie. It's been so long since I've seen your face. I worried you wouldn't come. Can't <laughs> even just standing there chilling. Oh my God! I thought you. And here I was, thinking you forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Way, come on. Oh God. Seems lost for words. Uh, yeah, like what? Explain, Peggy. Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, you uh -huh. got a call. Do you remember? Well, it was from Dawn. Or Marie. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. Mm-hmm. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And. When you walked in, you found out that my sister is the whistling man. You're an accomplice. Good to see you too, Peggy. You're an accomplice. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we meet you on the radio. And I just... Why? Yeah, man, you should have said, said something. something. What the hell? You should have told me. I know, okay? I should have. But I didn't <laughs> imagine this situation then, so... What, just... what is he here for? What is this point? What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Can I break this glass or something? You know what I mean? I was thrown out, Peggy. Probably not. His old I noodle arm. do something about what happened that night. But did they care? No. They don't need to stay quiet. There's no getting out of here. Marie, I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's mom and dad I should be seeing right now. But since they're dead and gone, well, I'll have to settle for the next best thing. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Is that what you. <laughs> Hold on. Next best thing? Next best thing. What? Do you mean. Someone has to pay for what they did. Marie. Please. Which is Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Who? Besides, you forgot me. <laughs> she gonna kill her sister. Just like the rest. Hey, she is a maniac. Is there any way I can prove Peggy didn't forget Marie? Oh God, really? Come on now, really? Look, this car right here. Happy birthday, sis. Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She, she kept it here on her desk. What oh, card? look at it. The card you made me for my eighth birthday. Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and say, eight. Then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Look, I'm spinning Love it around you. right in front of my I... face right now. Look at that. I... Anderson, police, no. <laughs> There's the cops. Hey, they going wild. <laughs> huh? Wait, what? Forrest! Leslie, how's Peggy? She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. I'll be okay. Get out of this office now. Marie! No? Hey, okay. Zara! I need you to look after Peggy. A chive mate, a tale of two sisters. Now, we got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She Why is she talking right like that? Here. The police are right on her heels. Mm -hmm. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. Is it, though? <sighs> well, folks, it was a long night, but we made he it He turned his together. radio voice right back on. To check on Peggy. This is Ben. This is crazy. Forrest Nash. Uh, good night and good morning. It's been a scream. Let's make to be tomorrow better. Yeah, and it's been it's a scream. Been a scream. Great show, everyone. The man, the myth, the scream. 
All right. Well, I guess this is uh, my progress. Oh, yeah, there's the credits. Let's see. So Scott got killed. Tammy, Eugene, Maurice, Chuck, and Murphy. See, I didn't do too bad. Some of them people wasn't my fault. You know what I mean? Some of them people was not my fault. All right, folks, there you have it. That was Killer Frequency. Uh, that game was very well put together. Bravo to the developers of this game. That was that was pretty damn good. I ain't gonna front you. I know I am the worst detective, though, and I did get some people killed. Um, hey, I tried to help them. What do you want me to do? As always, thank y'all for stopping by. Thank y'all for checking your boy out. Pussy Boots, Lay it Down Gaming. Y'all know what it is, man. And I will see y'all in the next video. I'm out this piece. Deuces.